god. We got a duo. I don't know. I don't know anything. My friend, how are you today? Oh, I just that's our message. Oh well, oops. Yes, that SMB race is going on. Oh yeah, thanks by the way, bud. Appreciate you. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> here, I'm here for you. No, dude. So I I woke up at like five to one p.m. and I'm like, fuck! I told that land I was doing that race with him. Fuck! I'm not. I'm gonna miss it. I'm gonna totally miss it, dude. And then you didn't message me back. And then Formula One actually took a hiatus here for 10 to 15 years. The racetrack wasn't very good. Oh god. Why? Yes. Love a wet race. <laughs> All right, well. A little late to the party, qualifying starting now for the Shake and Bake F1 series here tonight or today, whatever you are, live at Austria. You got a live view right there of the track. As we speak, we're going to go to qualifying, but I am Rick James up in the booth with me here tonight. I am Rick James 36 is his Twitch page. Greatly appreciate you being here, Rick. How you doing today, bud? Atlanta, it's my esteemed pleasure to be here with the great Atlanta Racing once again, I and it will right be my first Formula One race, and I am way too excited, much. my friend. It is the Red Bull Ring here in Styria in Austria, and these cars, one of my personal favorite tracks, these cars are going to going attack to it anyway. with ferocity, <laughs> and it's, it's going to be so much fun, man. How are you? Are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm doing good. I wish I could have made like it to... <laughs> Made it to the right race way, a little like... sooner to start qualifying, but uh, we're going to be all good. I, I thought last week I had some uh, Volts fan. Holy smackaroni, dude. Thank you so much. Uh, last week I had some co uh, company here, so I didn't do the race, and I talked to Frozen, and she said, oh, yeah, you're good to go. We didn't even have a race, so we are good to go. And let me fix something really quick as you guys are watching qualifying. I need to use OBS or something else. This uh, this is just a little bit too limited for my liking here on the Elgato Capture thingy majig, but nonetheless, we are looking at BRL Williams right now. He has got the fastest time at Austria so far. He's got a minute three, six, four, five. Trailing just behind is going to be Hellas here with a minute four, seven, one, six. So. We'll see what these guys have to do here tonight, or today. I'm going to say tonight, the whole, the whole race. Tonight at Austria. Bulls fan, you are awesome, dude. Greatly appreciate that once again. And, uh, yeah, since you, uh, since you and the other homies that uh, last race, I think it was the last F1 race, I hit that $100 uh, tier. So just waiting to get that check now. Who knows how long it'll take from Twitch, but I'm glad I hit it. And uh, Rick James, thanks for the host. What you thinking about Austria, Rick? I've played this game a lot, but, um, you know, Austria is one of those tracks I feel like I'm pretty darn good at. I can tell you right now that Vietnam is hard as crap in this game, 
Um, especially when you're going around those turns that remind you of Monaco. So, yeah. What you thinking about this? Austria is one of the most historic historic tracks oh, yeah. you can find on this circuit. It's got a great, great lead up to turn number one, a short run up, up to the uphill right-hander turn one section. Then as you go up that long straight into what is called Remus in turn number two, part of uh, part of the old, old circuit of the A1 ring. The, the undulations, the hill climbs, everything about this track is just so special. Not just because it's great to watch, but there's so much rhythm involved in well. The driver really has to feel the car through the downhill section and out of the Red Bull mobile corner, going down the hill, back up the crest into turn number one. So really, Everything is about rhythm. Of course, it's about mm -hmm. patience as well. But in those DRS sections on the front stretch and up the hill into Remus is where drivers need to be on their task, Atlanta. Yeah, you're exactly right. And uh, I can tell you right now when you're talking about patience, you definitely going to have some patience going into turn one. Um, it's not as bad as some. Uh, you know, tracks that have that really sharp turn, but that is definitely somewhere that a lot of these drivers, if they are not smart with the brakes, can, uh, you know, end up hitting somebody or ruining their own race or a wing or something from the get-go. So definitely got to make sure that you are good to go. One thing I do utilize in the F1 2020 game is the overtake button quite a bit. I really don't use it to overtake anybody, but I use it to get my RPMs up when I'm starting off. So after that first turn, I would probably kick on my uh, my overtake button almost immediately and try to get back up to speed. And I have found as I race with a couple of guys that that sometimes can be the key to you winning the race, just getting out in front faster. That is something very cool about this F1 2020 game as we are still on board right now with Hell is Here. He is now in third place. Rangers now in second with his time. And BRL Williams coming out right now. He is still your leader with only 11 minutes remaining in this qualifying session. I'm running along with that pink BWT for, excuse me, no longer Force India, but it's now Racing Point of J-Mag Attack. Right now sitting at 105.75. Good enough for fourth place. And he's got the considerable gap to Dion Ford Dub in fifth. And then just a couple of tenths off Hell is here in the third position. You see Leafs Justin in that other pink force india now overtakes him for fourth place and jmac is now coming in so it looks like the force indias are trading off where one comes in the other one is going to go out and start his hot lap but i'm loving what i'm seeing out of rangers x15 right now pete straight out of the gate jumps up into second place and there's only more improvement for that papaya colored mclaren yes sir and uh yeah looks like he is going in Rangers headed in right there. Leafs Justin. Hell is here. Looks like we're only going to have nine drivers. Frozen, how you doing? Greatly appreciate you being here. I mean, it's your league, but greatly appreciate you being here. <laughs> Vols fan, great to have you as well as I was not able to... Uh, let me get this out. Man, I literally ran home and, and jetted to my computer to get this done. There we go. But, yep, there they go down the side. Let's go take a look really quick. Go on board with the Leafs, Justin, as he is headed down the pits, actually. Well, well, well. J-Mac attack and pits as well. Dion for dub. Jam San... I can't even... Jam Sankith. I don't know where the first word ends and the second one begins sometimes. There we go. On board with more than a cape looking to take his fast lap. More than a cape, a... Uh, a staple, I feel like, in this community, doing a lot of great giveaways. And uh, you can also check out more about More Than a Cape at morethanacape.org and uh, check out his son, TJ Story. That is going to, uh, unfortunately, have to be with uh, pediatric cancer. So if you ever want to make a donation, feel like you're... Uh, you know, want to be in the giving spirit, head on over to morethanacape.org. And that is definitely a place that you know that your donation is going to go to a good place. 
Atlanta, one thing I've noticed is in sixth place right now in one of these, I believe that's going to be one of those red Ferraris, Dion Ford Dub, currently doing his fastest lap on mediums, not the option soft. So right now he does find himself three seconds off the pace, but he's only sixth in the running order on those medium tires. So I'm curious to see when that red Ferrari comes out of the pits on softs to put on that fast, hot lap. Yeah, and you know, that's one of those big things that is different between NASCAR and F1 is F1, you know, they both have their setups and everything, but these guys can actually race in the rain. If, you know, the tire condition meets a certain requirement, they're going to change their tires. And uh, I honestly, there's so much that goes into it. I know that there are limits on what you can and can't do, especially when you're changing your gearbox. And so, um, so I'm not too sure what kind of, you know, versus... I don't know what the word is. I don't know what kind of variables these drivers can bring to the race that can switch it up. Um, but it is very cool to see that they can change the tire, see if they can get a hotter lap. If not, they can go back in the garage, try to switch you know, some stuff up a little bit, and then head back out, see if they can't get something else done. But we're on board right now with Jam Sankith. He is a minute and 20 seconds. That is his fastest time, 17 seconds behind the top driver. Seven minutes left in qualifying as well. 777 must be lucky here today at Austria as we are getting ready to go green here in the next few minutes. Seven minutes remaining in this one and only qualifying session. BRL Williams still holding the top spot in this Williams race car coming out of these two final corners. Pete, as Williams comes off that final corner, that downhill section, we mentioned about the rhythm at Austria. One more thing that we need to mention is the weather. If it does rain here today, the rhythm is completely thrown off for these drivers. Again, it's not a flat track like your Silverstones, like your Vietnams. This is a track that is going to require patience and understanding the different levels in this racetrack. Yeah, and Frozen saying right there in the chat that it has rained, unfortunately, quite a bit for these guys. I can tell you right now that one of the most frustrating things is when I head to a track in this game and career and set a really fast lap and then we head to race the real race and it's pouring down rain. So, yeah, it definitely can come into play big time, um, especially at circuits like I was talking about Vietnam. There's that one portion that you enter the it's like it's almost a straight 180. You you do a full loop almost and then come out the other side. And uh, pretty much you need to be in second gear when you're going around that. And if you're not in third and it's raining, you are going to be messed up. I have slid out so many times in the rain of Vietnam. So, yeah, definitely not fun. But BRL Williams, your fastest driver so far with five minutes left to go in qualifying. Do I still got my time? Is still going. Yes. Drivers communicating just a little bit right there. Dion Ford okay. Dub yep, doing that in-race reporting for us as he did a previous week, two weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks ago. So greatly appreciate Dion Ford Dub and your host of this series, Frozen Toes, putting it all together. So greatly appreciate her as well. Repeat Vols fan Frozen. Love to see you guys in the chat and greatly appreciate all the high remarks for uh, us doing F1, especially since we haven't done F1 that much. Big shout out to Repeat 1975. He and I were commentating last night. I'm sorry, not last night. Uh, Two nights. A couple ago. nights ago <laughs> for NNR at Daytona. It was such a fun week. Uh, and for me, I'm, I'm just so geeked about doing F1 Atlanta. This is yeah. the sport of kings, if you will. Per personally, for me, I think it is the absolute pinnacle of motorsports. Uh, in the United States, uh, growing up as a child, we had F1 on Speed Vision with uh -huh. Bob Varsha, David Hobbs, and Steve Matchett. Um, and uh, now we're lucky enough to have uh, the guys from Sky F1, uh, David Croft and, and Nico Rosberg and the like, but um, it's, it's just great to really expand the skill that we see in the NASCAR community over mm -hmm. to the open wheel side as well. And not just open wheel, uh, Atlanta, this is the pinnacle of racing across the globe whether it's uh whether it's 1 30 p.m eastern time whether it's 6 30 uh greenwich mean time or whether it's uh, 7 30 here in spielberg uh, everyone around the world recognizes formula one so this is going to be a great great contest yeah it definitely is i didn't grow up honestly getting to watch as much f1 i feel like as i wanted to i grew up watching a lot a lot a lot of nascar 
sitting in my dad's lap at three years old playing NASCAR on the computer. So I have I grew up NASCAR, but as I got older, started getting more into IndyCar and F1. And as soon as I got the F1 games, I was hooked. So it's really fun. Beast Football, I would say that these handle a lot more realistically than the Forza cars. Uh, the Forza cars are... They're, they're nice and they're set up really good, but I feel like there is a generalization about the cars. It's not like these guys where I feel like it's going to matter where you're, whether you're in a Mercedes or a Williams. I think on Forza, it's just kind of like you're in an F1 car. So it's, it's similar, but there's minor differences, I think, that make F1 2020 um, a little bit more better than Forza Motorsports. I do tell you that F1 doesn't have like the Formula E that motor or forza has which is really fun i love formula e especially since they sound like a bunch of little pod racers going around the corner but it has formula 2 in here so this is definitely one of the top games i would say especially racing wise of this year atlanta certainly these call are much more sophisticated in everything they do than a rudimentary stock car. And as far mm -hmm. as the setup goes between Forza Motorsport 7 and Formula 1, you nailed it right on the head. These cars, although Forza Motorsport 7 has a great setup system where you can fiddle with everything, these cars have that genuine feel to the race car, whether it's oversteer from turning the car too hard, where the tire fall off is great depending on the weather. One thing that Forza doesn't do that the Formula One game does is apply the correct temperatures and the correct wear when it's raining on the racetrack, depending on what tire we go with. These skies are looking like they're getting darker, Atlanta. Pirelli might break out these intermediates any moment. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, we'll see. Um, oh, someone's spinning out. J Mac attack spinning out. Not the first time today, Atlanta. <laughs> earlier, about a couple minutes ago in uh, Sector 2, where he finds himself just on the exit of Sector 2 into Sector 3. He'd spun out. Uh, I'm sorry. It was more than a cape, not J Mac. Excuse me. It was more than a cape in that Alpha uh, who finds himself on the bottom of the running order who had uh, spun around in that uh, blue and white Alpha Towery. And now Sector 2 claims victim to that, um, goodness, I keep calling it a Force India. It is <laughs> the racing point of J Mac Attack. Yeah, unfortunate for him. And it looks like the sky is getting quite cloudy here in Austria. So that might mean some rain when we do roll around to that green flag here in just under a minute. Looks like BRL Williams is going to be that driver with the fastest time. He is only about three one thousandths of a second, or three hundredths of a second, I'm sorry, uh, right there to Ranger. So we'll see if Ranger can't pull something out here in the last few seconds, and then we will be underway here in Austria for this Shake and Bake F1 Series race. Tried to do some new stuff with the stream yesterday. I was a little bored and I was like, you know what? I'm going to upgrade the stream. I need to upgrade the software, but uh, it looks a little weird right now because that ticker at the bottom was not adjusted like I wanted to since I was in a rush when I got home. But uh, everything else looking cool as we have. Well, let's see if it gives them a little extra time. Yep, three minutes going to be remaining for this qualifying session. And B.R. Williams doing a fantastic job. Um, Rick James, let me step away for just one moment. I do have to give my dad a call because I'm meeting up with him later. And uh, yeah, I'll be right back. Atlanta will enjoy the uh, final images of qualifying here. 2.30 left remaining for these drivers to complete their outlaps. It looks like Jam Sand Kith has to complete his outlap. There you see Rangers crosses the line, and now all drivers have completed their flying laps, and qualifying is in the books here in Spielberg. With a length of four and one-third kilometers, it is not the longest race on any on anybody's track list. Uh, however, it does pack a lot of action into a short lap. Formula One has been coming here since the 1970s, and they took a small hiatus in the 90s when it was still known as the A1 ring, but with the help of Dr. Helmut Marco and Red Bull, they purchased the ring, renovated it, and made it into this gorgeous beacon in in Europe 
great little spot to catch a race. Just waiting on the rain. <laughs> this track's actually pretty forgiving. All right, so we're back. Sorry, Mike didn't come on. So it looks like we are uh, done with qualifying here for these guys. I believe that BRL Williams is going to have that fastest time here at Austria. Oh my gosh. See, I I like Jimmy Buffett, but I like uh I like Cheeseburger in Paradise. That's my song. You know, last night Atlanta Vols actually did start singing those lyrics and nobody got it. It was it was pretty <laughs> funny because he came in there and, and I saw I can't believe he's singing Jimmy Buffett in the chat. Thank goodness for that because the chat was uh, rather lifeless until Vols fan brought some music into it. But I'm, I'm <laughs> glad that you figured it out today. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm a <clears throat> I'm a country boy. I live 45 minutes from a Margaritaville uh, resort. So can't go wrong with any Jimmy Buffett, <sighs> man. All right. Well. Looks like this race is about Take to start. Lap. They're going to do a warm-up lap. 36 laps today in Austria. BRL Williams and Rangers going to be sitting in those top two spots. With Hell is here and Jam Sandkith in fourth. And Frozen said that Jam is a new driver to this F1 series. So greatly appreciate him uh, giving his talent to this series and uh, letting us watch him race. <laughs> Jimmy Buffett is huge in Cincinnati. I I would never think that, but I definitely could see it. My aunt used to live up in Cleveland, and all we got in Ohio were the Mally's chocolates from Cleveland. Those things are I don't even like chocolate, but the chocolate covered Oreos from Mally's, yes sir, I'll eat the box. <laughs> Drivers finishing up their formation now the bottom half. And there's the leader, BRL Williams. He spun the car right oh. before the Red Bull mobile corners. We'll see how that affects his starting position. He comes out right in front of the oh, racing points. Man. Luckily, it looks like he's ghosted. Um, but a scary, scary moment for the leader, ATL. Yeah, you definitely don't want to see that, especially just it taking took over a... Miles really, really early. Yeah, just taking over a hot lap like that. But uh, man, oh man, well... It looks like they're going to get lined up and wait on their comrade to scoot his way up. It's always weird. I've, I've gone on um, on uh, on YouTube before and seen like where drivers have accidentally lined up in the wrong way or whatever not. So it's kind of weird when you see that. Keep it clean. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go for Shake and Bake F1 Series. You can see the lights right there, and we are under a green flag as we get to race in here. It is not stage two. It is not the final stage. There we go, boys. It's Shake and Bake F1 Series with BRL Williams taking the lead. Heavy contact out of the first corner. Hell is here, makes contact with Rangers. A couple of the Force Indians have gone around out of the first corner. Two, three, four car involved, still backed up. Thank Both you. Force Indians still nose to tail. They can't figure it out. Finally pointed in the right direction. The yellow flag is still out. Up the hill and down that stretch, BRL Williams leads. Hell is here in second place. Rangers makes it through. Jam Sandkid in fourth I in that white Haas. David MC in the Red Bull, then more yeah. than a cape in the Alpha Tauri. Dion for dub in that Alpha Romeo. And then Leafs, Justin, and J Mac attack, bringing up the rear in the Force Indias. Half a lap in already at Atlanta. <laughs> Plenty of action. Oh, yeah, that's how these F1 races are, man. You get action from the get-go. I mean, the race didn't even start, and BRL Williams spun itself out. <laughs> that's some action for you. But we are looking back from Williams' car, and he has got a super fast car here today. As we go on board, you can see... Oh, well, you know what? F1 actually tells you. 
So second place is about two seconds back with third right on the tail of second. Everybody else just a little bit scattered back behind. The J-Mac attack unfortunately suffering that incident. He is now in ninth place and last, but he has not lost the pack. Still a lot of time to catch up as Dion Ford does. I had no front wing. Has, yeah, Dion saying he had no front wing, so having to go down into pits. See how Dion does, he's getting the adjustments there. The Alpha House, the wing, it's down and away, dead last. But again, <laughs> there is still so much race to go. Only three laps of the scheduled 36 underway through the vert curb and now headed towards rent is brl williams car. in that gorgeous <laughs> number 62 white williams car hell is here in close pursuit two and a third seconds behind man oh man yeah hell is here getting up to brl williams as uh brl is headed on the i guess you could say the front straightaway right there crossing the start finish line and getting into that turn one i love watching these guys race because sometimes when i'm racing i'll try to think about you know how they take the line and stuff and taking it out wide like that and trying to kick it in that's a good move right there from williams so let's see where hell is here he is catching up pretty darn quick right there to the back of brl williams as well as rangers right there as well these top three drivers all getting together repeat left repeat uh yeah, they used to have, or they have one at Lake Lanier Islands here in Georgia. They are considering building one in downtown Atlanta on top of what used to be Little, or I'm sorry, Five Points. Um, a lot of people do not know that Atlanta is a raised up city since we were a train city, or a locomotive city per se. So you can actually, or you used to, could go to Five Points and actually be on the original street level of what Atlanta was, but you were actually underground. So that's why they uh, ended up starting to call it Underground Atlanta. A little cool fact for you. <clears throat> Genuinely did not know that about Atlanta. The only thing I know about yep. Atlanta is the Falcons and Coca-Cola. Still looks like a fun place. Yeah, Falcons, oh, oh, Coca-Cola. their hell is here. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Atlanta. No. Hell is here getting loose out of the Nikki Lauda curve there. You say, and I say loose, that's not the correct word. Too much oversteer out of the Nikki Lauda curve. And right there is just a product <laughs> of being hard on that gas. Um, I'm looking at these drivers here, and I see that most of them are on the, if not all, most of them are on the red soft tires, which should probably go about 14 to 16 laps on this first stint, just under the halfway mark. So we'll see who manages tires best at always. As always, mm -hmm. it's going to be a big factor if this weather comes. Right now, BRL Williams setting the pace, but the fight for second place was tight up until Hell is Here loses the loses control of his race car out of the Nicky Lauda curve. Oh man, well, very unfortunate for Hell is Here, but you've got to take it easy. You, I mean, you, you can't take it too easy, but you at least got to make sure that you're not going to outrun yourself. I can tell you right now, when I raced those old cars, I believe it was the, I think it was a 1989, um, might have been a Ferrari. I can't remember what it was, a 1989 something. But man, you come out of those corners, if you're not in high second gear going into third, you're going to spin out. So it is very, very cool to see how much technology and advancement has gone into... Uh, this racing but yeah as frozen said a few penalties have been awarded so far i believe i can go over here yeah into the incidents and we can see that hell is here has received a three second penalty for multiple warnings jam sandkit in his haas car has received multiple warnings and a three second penalty as well everybody else just receiving those penalties so far I love that telemetry, Atlanta. I love that you can see where drivers have been awarded penalties and for what reason. So the running order fans, as you see it, may not be how the race ends. David MC, 1989, has made up two positions since lights out at the start of the race. He now finds himself in the fifth position in this Red Bull. And the interval up ahead to the driver, well, and Hell is here now in the pits after uh, possibly incurring some damage or some penalties. So David MC, now uh, eight seconds and counting. He's about to overtake Hell is here. And there he does, up the hill into Nicky Lauda curve. Man, oh man. Well, they've gotten kind of spread out, like I said earlier, but it's
It's a little, uh, it, you know, every time I, I do these, uh, holy smack, Vols fan. Thank you so much, dude. Um, uh, that lost my train of thought. But every time I, um, I play these, I can't help but think about what it is like in NASCAR. And, you know, when in NASCAR, you've got some guys wrecking, the caution comes out, everybody restacks, and you're good to go. And this is a lot different. When a caution comes out, you can't overtake on that certain area, but as soon as you come out of it, you're good to go. So if DRL Williams has a little incident behind him and he's not in that yellow zone anymore, I mean, pretty much even if he is in that yellow zone, there's nobody to, for him to pass. He's good to go. And that can definitely come into play with these races. You know, if you spin out or even make the slight mishap, of, you know, cutting a corner too hard, you're going to, you know, lose some very, very valuable time here in Austria. And uh, it just makes it even more, I feel like, uh, rewarding when you do win these races because there's really nothing you can do if you mess up. Well, 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 looks like we have some some racing back here it looks like David MCC 1989 Mick 1989 however you want to ha uh, say it and hell is here our fourth and fifth place hell is here looking to overtake that fourth place position but do remember he has a three second time penalty that will be added at the end of this race for multiple warnings so that is something that the driver does have to keep in the back of his mind or her mind if they are racing this race and they uh even if they are in front of the other driver they got to make sure that they are three seconds ahead of that other driver if they want to stay in that position or so far the only penalties sorry atlanta i didn't mean to cut you off so far no, you're the good. penalties have been handed out to jam sand camp and hell is here as you mentioned earlier in the mercedes and uh that haas three seconds of peace Ooh. back at this battle for the fourth position david mcc 1989 trying to hold off that mercedes but he uses the drs and the overtake button and what a clean move into nikki lauda curve but now they're going back up the hill to remus and now the red bull of david mcc has that drs advantage headed up the hill to Remus. Yep, Leafs Justin spinning out and David Mixie, 1989, being awarded a three-second time penalty for multiple warnings. As Vols fan says that B.R. Williams might as well be John Cena because nobody can see him. And that seems to be the case. As he, he might have been John Cena, he couldn't even see the track earlier, he spun out. That's a joke, nothing against him. <laughs> as he enters turn one, BRL Williams seems to have the car to beat here today in Austria. Man, these races go by extremely fast, especially at this track. We're almost already a third of the way through this race. Formula One races at Atlanta are designed to be not very long or not endurance events. The rules in Formula One, I should say that the excuse me the regulations say that the race does not go more than two hours in length for any point so if there is a delay as far as weather or cleaning up an accident on the racetrack the race clock still ticks and does not allow for the race distance to go longer than two hours so these races are meant to be uh, quick affairs but also very action Packed affairs. Even though BRL Williams has a six and a half second lead headed out of Red Bull Mobile Curve, there's still plenty of action to see and plenty of storylines considering there is cloud cover in these hills at Spielberg. Yep, and that's what they have frozen said in chat. Yeah, it was looking like it was getting a little uh, cloudy, and it's it's something with these F1 games, man. It's crazy how they have the dynamic weather. Um, where it can be clear as day and then go to rainy or be cloudy and then go to sunny or whatever it might be. Um, same thing when I play Flight Simulator, they actually have live weather. I know they used to do that on the Madden games as well, but it's pretty cool that uh, it can be raining outside here and I load into Atlanta Airport and it's raining at Atlanta Airport. So very, very cool that they can make this dynamic work in this game. As we are looking at Leaf Justin and Jay Mac Attack, they've been at each other's neck all afternoon not night and uh but br williams man he just keeps extending that lead between him and second third place is even farther behind almost 20 seconds behind so really really gapping out here in austria 
just a couple of tenths between the forts in goodness me the uh, the the racing points those pink Panther racing points between J Mac Attack and Leafs Justin. And you saw J Mac Attack with the help of DRS going into Remus, go, takes the position from Leafs Justin. And now these two continue to sit just nose to tail, less than a second between them. Back in eighth place, more than a cape on those soft tires. He's had about nine laps on those softs in the Alpha Tauri. And then ninth place, Dion Fordub continues on those hards. So if indeed rain comes, it could be the great equalizer. BRL Williams now in that white Williams coming down the hill into Roush, looking to make the pass. Dion for Dub receiving a three second time penalty for multiple warnings. He is in last place, but even if he does catch up, that can definitely come into play for his final time. As Rick James said, BRL Williams is our leader, and it looks like he might be coming up on some lap traffic, actually, which is, I feel like, kind of rare for these F1 games. You don't usually have lap traffic. No, Atlanta, it's something that you don't regularly see, but when the leader's on soft tires and putting a blistering pace and last place is on hard tires putting a less than blistering pace, it's something you're going to see. So Dion Ford Tub now headed up the hill. Uh, but again, anything can happen. We are just about one third of the way into the scheduled race distance in Spielberg. Uh, I mentioned earlier, Atlanta, that Formula One has been coming here since 1970 when it was known as the Oosterheich Ring. <laughs> Nicky Lauda's home track and the great French Formula One champion Alain Prost has the history for has the title for most wins here with three. Yeah, Rick, I don't know if you have seen the movie Cinna that is on Netflix, but that is a yeah, it's a very, very good movie. Um, it, I mean, you the thing is, is you know how it's going to end, but it still gets you. So um, it's it's crazy, man. It's crazy. I, I was actually watching a NASCAR clip yesterday of uh, when they announced during the, I believe it was the Atlanta race, that Senna had passed away. Um, Dale Earnhardt ended up winning that race and immediately said that, you know, giving his condolences to Senna family. So just kind of goes to show that the racing family is full circle no matter where you are or from in the world. We're all on the same track. Well, BRL Williams still leading this race. He has got Dion Ford Dub now a lap down. And Dion's going to sit there. I don't know if he is in permanent ghost mode or if he can actually use the slipstream coming off of BRL Williams' car. But we'll see if that might get him a fast lap here today at Austria. But, Rick, yes. isn't it crazy? Easily. We've got about DRS five more laps until this race is halfway over. Five more laps until the race is halfway, but the rain is falling, Atlanta. Look uh -oh. on the screen. Fans, take a look. Raindrops are falling on the heads of these nine drivers in the Austrian hills. And one thing I've noticed that BRL Williams does is coming right through Roush, Atlanta. The next time you'll notice, he uses the rumble strip and then doesn't begin to turn the car until the access road in that downhill section using the grip mm -hmm. from that road to turn the car as wide as possible and it's absolute genius what i'm seeing out of him and it explains the reason that he has a 12 second gap to rangers x15 now on this 14th lap of competition just take a look next time he comes down the hill into route genius genius slipping. move and you were 100 percent correct that was 1994 uh, where uh, Dale Earnhardt had won at Talladega and was given the news about the tragic passing of uh, Ayrton Senna. For those oh, that Talladega, seen it, gotcha. The, for those that haven't seen it, Senna, for my money, not only as a racing fan, but as someone who loves sports documentaries, one of the greatest pieces of film I've ever seen in my entire life. I encourage everyone to watch it. And the spray Atlanta is now kicking up. All these drivers mm -hmm. are on slicks. Pit stops are imminent. Yep, you're exactly right. This is when that slipping and sliding comes into play, but you're talking about BRL Williams taking that line earlier just so perfectly almost, and that's the exact way he's taking that first turn. When he goes into that turn, most guys are, you know, slamming on their brakes, downshifting pretty hard. Man, he might downshift one or two times, but he is through that corner so fast. You'll see it right here. And the pit window is open, lap 15, 16. It's a one-stop strategy during this race. You're only going to really have one time you need to pit. You're on a wet track surface now, so that's definitely going to come into play when you do go down into pits. 
But yeah, Frozen saying BRL Williams is crazy good in their IndyCar series as well. So I'm not surprised at all that BRL Williams is in the lead here today in Austria. And there is a yellow flag, Sector 2. Sector 3, let's go see. Oh, well, it looks like they probably recovered right there. And that rain, you can see more than a cape. And BRL Williams almost losing it just a little bit. They're going to have to be careful before they can head back down into pits. Man, he gets loosey-loosey right there, I'm telling you. You got to keep those gears high. Atlanta, the rain is starting to have an adverse effect on the drivers. You can see the spray is kicking up, and I don't know how much longer they can stay out here on this wet racing service. BRL Williams now, right now, putting the pressure and trying to squeeze. Uh, I believe that's more than a cape. And then the blue lights are flashing, and blue lights are flashing and telling more than a cape to get out of the way, which he's done so. So now completing lap 15 on lap 16 of the scheduled 36. BRL Williams leads this race and has yet to come in, Pete. The intermediate tires are ready, <laughs> but these drivers are far more brave than what I expected. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Rick, you, you call me Pete like <laughs> two times oh, a stream. <laughs> I know it's so I, funny. I know how it is. It's just going to be called Pete because I called, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I, I, I called the uh, Vols fan Pete last night. I called Vols fan, uh, I called him Pete, who's uh, Rylan Pinnell. I was doing. I was doing the IVRL IndyCar season opener with Rylan Pinnell last night, and I called him Pete like three times. I had. Really need to stop calling him Pete. Anyway, oh, it's back all to the good. race. 16 <laughs> laps in at Spielberg. Yes, sir. BRL still winning this race. Let's go take a look back at some of the other drivers. More than a cape. It looks like he is. I'm not too sure. It looks like he's slowing down. That's going to cause a caution right there. Dion Ford Dub with that three second time penalty. He's just trying to make his way around the track, but doing some in race reporting for us. Like I said earlier, Jay Mack attack. He was having some uh, competition earlier with that Leafs Justin car, but he has fallen uh, two spots. It looks like back to seventh place while Leafs Justin is coming out of pits. He stayed about where he's been the entire race. David Mick C 1989 also with the three second time penalty able to overtake as Jay Mack is in the pits. Jam Sankith. Just riding it pretty right now in fourth place, trying to take those turns super easy and not spin out. That's a very, very big part of this rain race. You don't want to spin out in those corners because that is what is going to get you. Hell is here right there coming into the, well, he was coming into the turn. Now he's coming into pits. Ranger in pits as well. And BRL Williams, still your leader, as I said, he is now going into turn one. Jam Sankith and J-Mac attack the only drivers, and J-Mac's lost it coming out of Remus, Atlanta. These are the only uh -oh. two drivers still on reds. They're still on those softs, and now Jam Sankith mercifully makes it into pit lane to put intermediates on, but keep your eye on Jan on J Mac attack, and you see Jam San Kith, a five second penalty for speeding in the pit lane. That was one more thing I wanted to keep mm. my eye on. Atlanta is just how dangerous these cars are on a wet race track with slick tires. And the biggest loser of all of this is going to be J Mac attack. He's losing so much time after being so quick on those dry tires. This really could be a top five, uh, the top five slipping away for J Mac. Yeah, it freaked me out for just a second because I, they have this game's a little too realistic at points. They have people's hands coming through the fence and uh, it scared the, the crap out of me. I didn't know what was happening. I, I believe I saw the last race I did on this game, a person hopping the fence. I swear I need to go back and watch it, but I'm pretty sure I saw them hopping the fence. So it's a little weird as I see that with the cars coming around. But yeah, uh, a J Mac attack right there. Going to be falling back into 8th place. He is in the pits right now. More than a cave. Just trying to make his way around the track. Let's watch him come around this corner. Yeah, you can see, man. They are just trying to take it as fast as they can. But still, still take it cautiously. Because, like I said, it only takes one little spin anywhere on this track. And you can lose this race. But it, uh, earlier when BRL spun out, he said that was the AI randomly spun him out. I don't know why he did that, but we are now to the halfway uh, point, Rick, for this race. BRL Williams and Ranger have been sitting at the top all race. Will this rain come into effect, knock him out, and we might have a new leader, or will BRL take it home? 
Passengers still three seconds behind BRL Williams, but there's still plenty of time to make up. One driver mm -hmm. I want to keep my eye on is David McSee in the Red Bull. He's got two laps on his intermediates, Atlanta, so that means his tires are up to temperature more than most. This is when he needs to cane it through these corners and use that tire temperature to his advantage. 19 laps into this race, these drivers may not make another pit stop if it continues to race for the remainder of the distance, but if there is a dry line forming in these final 10 laps, you may see one or two drivers brave the weather as the yellow flag comes out in sector three. That's more than a cape who's gone off the racing surface again, and he goes again. Jam Sankinth just avoiding him headed into Red Bull Mobile. Yeah, more than a cape right there coming out of the sand. And uh, you've got to make sure, and you can see him right there, you've got to make sure when you are restarting, especially in the rain, that you do not start it off in first gear all the way full power. If you're going to be going first gear, you got to kind of, you know, feather that throttle, get it up into second, and get your, your stability under control. Because too many times, especially in the old cars, I have been in first gear or even second gear and gotten wrecked and tried to come out and just pushed on the gas and it does not perform like these F1 2020 cars sometimes and you just lose it. Bulls fan, uh, back to you, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'll, I'll bring that one line uh, back in here as well, back to you, Pete. Uh, more than a cape, you can see he's putting on wet tires, Atlanta. I don't know if he's ahead <laughs> of the curve or what, but he's got to try something now. And now on full wets with the rest of the field being on intermediates. And I'm not sure it's time for full wets yet, Atlanta. The downpour has not become torrential, and more than a cape could be just digging a deeper hole. Yeah, he, he might be. I mean, you know, I know he's a great driver. Um, it's just with these conditions, and I know the, a lot of these guys are new to the F1 series, it just takes some getting used to, man. Um, it's a lot different from NASCAR, as I keep going back to. There's no rain in NASCAR. It is kind of similar, though, uh, to racing on dirt, the way you're going to have to kind of work those tires around some of these corners to make it actually stable. Uh, that is one thing, you know, Lewis Hamilton is the best F1 driver probably to ever race. He's got the most wins. He's just fantastic. But when you look back at people like Senna and Prost and stuff, I can't even hardly say his last name. I don't know why I always kind of mispronounce it. But uh, when you look back at them, they are working that steering wheel like it's, it's something crazy, man. They're just spinning it back and forth, just trying to get around those turns because those cars don't have the traction control and the stability that these guys do. Back in that day, Pete, that was one of the most insane periods in Formula One. The Atlanta, God bless it. It was 1,000 plus horsepower on those Formula One race cars when Prost and Senna were driving. Uh, 1988 is one of the most famous years in Formula One architecture. The year of the MP44, mm -hmm. and I believe that was the year that McLaren won all except one of the races in that calendar year. Ayrton Senna would go on to be champion, but with more than 1,000 horsepower and, and very little in the way of electronic assistance before the electronic revolution of the early 90s. They were nothing more than explosive go-karts. So it took uh, in, in just savant levels of skill to understand the race car. And as yep. they say, Atlanta, no one was better in the rain than the great Ayrton Senna. I'm telling you, man. I mean, I, I'm, I'm gonna stop it at this because I need to talk about the race. But I watched his first lap in an F1 car yesterday, and he beat all the other drivers that had done it by a second. And that was his first time in the car. That's something to, I mean, that's something to show right there, man. That's crazy that you can hop in a car that guys have been sitting in for years, your first time, and you're already a second faster. That's called a champion right there. A great champion indeed, and so far, great scenes in the rain. BRL Williams holding on to a 21-second interval over Rangers, who's now leaving, uh, I'm sorry, Remus is the name of that corner. He's leaving Remus at the uphill section and now coming down into Roush, the downhill section in the mid part of this race circuit. Hell is here, finds himself in third, now just a bit behind the uh, Papaya McLaren of Rangers, James Sandkith in fourth, and I believe we got a notice earlier that say David McSee had retired from the session on the bottom of my screen, Atlanta, but he seems yeah. to be doing ball too well. 
Yeah, so David actually just was in the chat um, and said that his internet just crashed, unfortunately. So I believe that did take him out of this race. Um, I'm not too sure because it kind of looks like he's... Is that... Uh, yeah. I don't know if he reconnected or what back, but yeah, he's still That's there. The, uh, oh, it's the AI. Wow, this game is crazy. So yeah, the AI is actually working David's uh, car right now, keeping him in sixth place as he gets up next to Leaf Justin, and we're good to go. I forgot that you can like pause this game and the AI takes over. That's crazy. That's pretty special. That's that's pretty special game <clears throat> construction. Tip of the hat to uh, Codemasters. Uh, yeah, for, for real. building such a beautiful game, and I was reading an article yesterday. Take Two Interactive, the guys that make 2K Sports, the guys that made uh, the Bioshock games, have actually purchased Codemasters for just under one billion dollars. <laughs> so good things coming for the future of of gaming, and hopefully the next F1 game is only further improved from this this visual marvel. Yeah, man, it's it's something else because. Uh, you know, you look at the Madden and the FIFA games and they come out every year and people are, you know, it's copy and paste, it's copy and paste. These games, I don't know if anybody has ever really come out and been like, yeah, these games are horrible. Because every year, even though it might be something little, they usually bring something to the table that at least excites you and makes you want to play the game even more. Especially bringing back a lot of these old cars. I wish NASCAR would do that in Heat 5. Bring back, you know, maybe some like Daryl Hart Jr., Alan Kowicki, you know, Bill Elliott cars. That would be so fun to race with those guys like you can in these. Go find your old driver and get in his car. You're good to go. It's quite special when you can have Gerhard Berger's Ferrari and you can also have Michael <laughs> Schumacher's Ferrari uh, side by side on the racetrack. It's, it's a great yeah. nod to You're the exactly history. Right of formula one and and what a historic sport it is and that's not to take away from the history of nascar or indycar as well but again formula one being the pinnacle of motorsports across the globe it's it's wonderful to introduce the next generation to why the old generation still loves this sport 25 laps yep. in this race atlanta and brl williams continues to put a blistering pace he has not faltered even with the moisture on the racetrack yeah, you're exactly right. It doesn't seem like this race has faint, phased him, I'm sorry, too much. 11 laps to go in this Austrian Grand Prix, and it looks like it is going to belong to Williams. I don't want to call it too soon, but him and Ranger have been first and second all afternoon. A little tire lockup right there. Now Rain definitely coming into play, but BRL Williams, Ranger, and Hellas here, all top three drivers, but they are 25 seconds apart almost each of them so you gotta you gotta think where, where are you gonna make it work you've got 10 laps to go how can you get up to brl williams or are you just gonna count on hopefully the rain will do something and maybe take out that driver but like you said rick so far this rain has not really done anything yet to that brl williams car one thing i've noticed going through the roush corner brl williams is running a little wide headed into Roush and you can see now going into Red Bull Mobile he's on that dry line beautifully but you can see that dark line that has formed there is where the moisture has been removed from the racetrack relatively speaking of course while it still rains with the tread on the tires so it's it's, it's a hotter temperature for the intermediate tires as you see James Sankint gets another three second time penalty for multiple warnings but that mm. dry line is where the speed is however that is where more wear is for these intermediate tires so as they get hotter and you can see there's a lockup into Remus from that 62 Williams as these tires get hotter they're going to want to experiment more with putting there it is right there you see BRL Williams getting into the wet line just to cool those tires down even for a microsecond yeah <laughs> Dude, this game is insane the amount of detail that goes into this game going into the water to cool your tires down like come on that is a beyond crazy that they have that capability to put that into a game but man oh man i love to see it brl williams now coming up on another lap car on board with ranger Hearing his tire skid like crazy as he comes down there, but keeping it under control, that's what matters. Hell is here, taking it back. He is looking to this very long part of this track. I believe this is a DRS zone right there. And we've got Jam Sandkith. I'm never going to say that name right. I have to think about it before I say it, but 
He is now crossing the start finish line coming through turn one. James Sandkiff, the last car on the lead lap, but you can see the leader of BRL Williams is preparing Catch for an overtake. Up, Headed up the hill into Roush. The blue flag's already out for James Sandkiff, telling him to please kindly make way. We'll see how the, oh, there you see, there it is. Atlanta, just the wet track. You can see almost the leader, BRL Williams, putting just a bit too much pressure on him. And he does, there he goes. A uh, big tip of the cabinet to James Sandkiff. He yields his position headed into the downhill center section of this racetrack. Yeah, I think that was honestly a very good visual representation of just how BRL Williams is taking these corners. You saw that car next to him starting to break, and man, it almost was like he sped up. He just went through that corner like it was nothing, and now you can barely see that car anymore. So, you know, when you got this game, when you get it down, you got it down. And it looks like BRL Williams has got it down here today in Austria with only, it looks like, eight laps to go here in the race. Just, a, just less than 10 laps remaining, and really, it's a cruise control mission all the way to the end. But he must maintain focus, Atlanta. This track is wet. This track is going to be your worst enemy if you make a mistake. He's adjusting buttons on the steering wheel there. You can bet that's probably fuel mixture uh, or a couple other buttons that you can adjust to, to adjust the weight of the car. Dion Ford Dub gets a three-second penalty for cutting the racetrack once more. And the rain just doesn't help Atlanta. So uh, the concentration that Williams has put into this race uh, really speaks volumes to where he is on the racetrack. And if he can concentrate for another eight and a half more laps, you'll really just put a spanking on this field. Yeah, you know, you never want to win a football game 51 to 5 or something like that. But that's what's happened here today. You sometimes like to see a little bit more... Um, rivalry going on a little bit more competition but especially when that rain comes out it's a lot harder to bring any of that to play when you're just really focusing on keeping your car on this track that rain must be treacherous especially if it's uh producing all these puddles on the track but as he crosses the line he's gonna have seven more laps and he will be the winner of this race man oh man it has the been Grand Prix. Else. It is something else, Atlanta. The Austrian Grand Prix providing these gorgeous images here. Hell is here in that black Mercedes now down what we would call the backstretch in NASCAR, headed into the center section of sector number two. I'm, I'm just so impressed that these drivers have been able to put on such a great show for the duration of this race. Uh, even drivers like J-Mac Attack, more than a cape, who have had their fair share of spills in today's event, still holding strong and still resilient nonetheless to finish this race to its completion. Yeah, you know, that's the big difference between F1 NASCAR 2 is if this was a NASCAR race right now, all the drivers would be sitting in pits with a, a, a cover over their car, but not these guys. Uh, they're sitting out there in pretty much open conditions and just taking this race as it comes, man. As BRL Williams heads to that front straightaway, six laps to go as he crosses the line. And, I mean, it's something else if you can put those rain tires on and pretty much race exactly like you were when it wasn't raining. And that's what we're seeing here from Williams going on board with Ranger. Let's see how he is taking mm -hmm. these corners Sorry, as we have a yellow flag. It looks like Hell is Here is spun out. Third place Hell is Here has spun out. Jam San Kint now trying to make up the gap and take that last podium position, but he's moving once again, and the yellow flag has been taken off the racetrack. There it is one more time, Atlanta, and I'm not sure where the incident is this time, and it's more than a cape yep. in the Alpha Tauri. He's spun, coming out of Roush, mm -hmm. headed into Red Bull Mobile, <laughs> so and slow. it, uh, <laughs> again, just another spin for more than a cape, but he continues his resilience, and the uh, AI car of David McSee now hot on his heels, completing Back. completing lap 30 and it, we just get that notification that David has rejoined the race no, so he's man. back on the attack and he's going to look <clears> up, to make up a couple more positions in the closing circuits man oh man isn't that a cool feature that if even if your internet goes out you can hop back on these F1 man. games and get involved once more as BRL Williams looking to head to that front straightaway once again saw more than a cave mm, spin so out he is now behind the ghost of somebody <laughs> Jay McAttack headed down into pits 
And it looks like that is David right there behind more than a cape. Leaves Justin headed around as Hell is Here is in pits as well. And like uh, Rick said, you're only going to really need that one pit stop to get fuel. That was around lap 15 or 16. So with only five laps to go, this should be the end of the race. Not too many more pit stops unless you're getting wing damage or something like that. Pete, they're on wet tires, and this is what I was just watching. The rain was getting a bit heavier, and more than a cape has, I'm sorry, J-Mac Attack has gone for wet tires, and he's crashed it already. On wet tires, leaving the pits up Nicky Lauda curve, he's left one of the end plates, one of the barge boards, to that front wing in pit road. If you get a close look on the front of that racing point, the left side of the front wing is missing the end plate, which he just left on the exit a little too fast on cold, wet tires, and it bites him once again. The, I'm sorry, uh, J-Mac attack uh, needs to focus a little bit harder. We'll see if he comes in to repair that damage, but the end of this race just was not going to get any better on wet tires, and it's going to get worse now that he's missing pieces of his race car. Yeah, David right there do not <laughs> did not finish DNF. He is going to be in seventh place for right now. Uh, BRL Williams still sitting in first. Still got this. Oh, no, Jam's... Jam Sandkit has entered third place. Uh, as David says, of course I take back control during a corner, and that unfortunately spun him out. And it looks like the safety car is actually out right now, guys. Safety First car time. is out, Atlanta. Safety car is out. You called it, and we're gonna see how this uh, how this plays oh, into the race with with a wet track. One car already on wet tires. You see, Rangers gets a five-second penalty for speeding in the pit lane. Mm. And now that the drivers are going to be bunched back up on the safety car, it could be a fatal mistake. Safety car with less than five to go in Austria. They spit on pit lane like an idiot. Oh, man. Yeah, someone's saying they spun on pit lane like an idiot. Unfortunately, the rain kind of makes everybody feel like an idiot the way it'll take the tires around from you. Yeah. But, um... Man, oh man. Again. Somebody receiving another five second penalty. Looks like Leaf Justin. J Mac with another three second time penalty. I believe he was spinning out back there. But only four laps to go in the race. BRL Williams trying to take it, I feel like, as cautiously as he can now. As he knows this uh, race is winding down, he's going to head down into pit. Safety car is still out. And we'll see with these drivers getting behind that safety car if they can't make something else happen. A little bit of uh, competition towards the end of this race. We'll see what happens now in the final three, uh, four, three to four laps here at Austria. Will it be fresh intermediates? Will it be on wets? Dion for dub now on wets. J Max on wets. More than a cape is on wets. And BRL Williams remains on the intermediates. Is that the right move in these? Final three and one half laps at Atlanta. The track has slowed down. Temperature has cooled down, and you can see the dry line is starting to fade on the racetrack. Yep. Possibly, wets could be the good move, but BRL Williams has shown the skill to hang on to the race car. The safety car now picks him up, so the car tires are going to be cold. These cars are mm -hmm. going to have a, a cool-down period here. I don't know if Intermediates is the best move, uh, but we'll see in these closing three laps. Rangers is now going to catch him up under the safety car period. Yep, like you said, that dry line getting thinner and thinner. Man, oh man. Sober David. Yeah, sorry about that, bud. Great. I, hope you, uh, I hope you have a better race next week. I, I've played this game multiple times. Having to, to take control in a corner is never easy, so... You did a great job, man. We'll see you next week. And it's just even more uh, fuel to the fire to get it, you know, get that car in the victory lane next week or, you know, podium finish, whatever you want to say. But uh, just wanted to take some time to thank Jacob NASCAR, Guano Loco Lobo, Rowdy Trucks, Alpha York. I don't think I've ever had this many. Bulls fan, Worm Rider, and Rig James all for hosting this race right now. You guys are all great. All those donations earlier, too. I don't know what it is, if you guys like F1 better or something, but man, I stream F1 and the donations start rolling in. So greatly appreciate that from Vols fan here tonight. Giving away some subscriptions as well. As BRL Williams looks like he's headed back into pits. BRL Williams coming back into pits oh, under the safety up. car period Atlanta. He's got that nine second lead on Rangers and Rangers deciding not to come in the pits, but uh, he does find himself 
now in the lead. Oh, More Lord. than a cape has a drive through penalty <laughs> for speeding under the oh, safety man. car. And three laps down, it goes from bad to worse. And there's the move, Atlanta. Williams has put on the wet tires, just as we predicted. The track has cooled down. The temperature is no longer in these wheels. And we have wet tires on the fastest car in the race. Rangers lead on intermediates, Williams in second on wet tires, and the safety car should be in either this lap or next lap. The Red Bull ring just got a lot more wild. Yeah, and the thing is, is these drivers aren't going to have but maybe two laps now to that's finish up this race. Rangers and BL Will BRL Williams, I'm sorry, have <clears throat> been first and second all afternoon, and now Rangers has gotten that top spot with BRL Williams right there behind him. It's going to be a very oh, interesting God. finish to this race. It sounds like the safety car is going to be in this lap. So we will have these drivers racing again momentarily. It will be lap 35 out of 36. So that means two laps to go here in the but race at Austria. Slow down of the I am Rick James, 36, just, in the booth with me mm -hmm. today. Greatly appreciate him being here. Dion Dub doing some in-race reporting. Bros and Toes is the owner in the host of all these shake and bake events so greatly appreciate her putting in that time and effort to make these things even come to a uh, come to fruition i guess you could say all right rick you ready for this restart picking up position Atlanta, I'm so ready. Out of Red Bull Mobile, Rangers leading on intermediate tires. He's got BRL Williams, the race's fastest driver behind him, with just two circuits remaining at the Red Bull ring. They attack. Oh, he's out of curve. Nose to tail. Up the hill. Oh, Rangers man. goes wide. Rangers goes wide. There's the pass for first uh, place. BRL Williams into the lead, headed up the hill. Into the the oh, my gosh. Man, oh, man. What a move right there no from BRL Williams. Dion is the owner of F1 League. My bad. So, Dion, greatly appreciate all the hard work. I already knew you did hard work, but thank you, sir, for owning this league and letting us do uh, some broadcasting for you as BRL Williams is sitting back where he has been all afternoon in first place over to take... Oh, I can't even say it. Able to overtake Ranger right there near turn one. And we only have one lap to go following the completion of this lap. Can the Rangers car get up there and catch... BRL Williams, he's now got on some competition. Oh no, that's actually Leafs Justin. He is a laughed car. I'm so sorry. He's sitting in fifth place. A little hard to tell sometimes. Hey, this is now the most crucial lap for Rangers. He will not win this race, but he wants to stay on the podium. Jam Sandkamp is 51 seconds and counting behind him, but Rangers is again on the intermediate tires, as is Jam Sandkamp. And Hell is here, who's gone off the track out of Remus. Pete, they have no grip, and if they intend on keeping second, third, and fourth, respectively, they cannot make a mistake. J Mac attack with a five second penalty for speeding in the pit lane after coming down for, I believe, the fourth time today. Well, I said it wouldn't this matter is the final lap I as BRL Williams goes up the hill and out penalty. of Remus for the more final more time in at Atlanta. What can you we say? Three An absolute masterclass in, in the rain. rain. Yeah, man, BRL Williams has shined like a, a I guess you could Fucking say a gym rain. through this uh, pouring rain right now. He has led, I think, every single lap other than that one that Rangers just uh, started off at the restart. But as he completes this final lap, I said it about halfway through the race, it I mean, might it be his race. Slow down, and I believe BRL Williams will up, be the like car to take earlier. it here tonight. I don't know how the heck I have 16 subscribers on Twitch, but that is freaking awesome. I had like nine the other day or eight, something like that. But Williams, as we go on board to complete his final yes. lap here at the Austrian Grand Prix, Bjorn Williams is going to win it in the rain for the Shake and Bake F1 Series. Going on board to Rangers, he's going to finish with a podium second place as he rounds that final corner right I there see, i can't even see the end of the straightaway through and man oh man a lot of drivers <laughs> saying they can barely see anything rangers five second time penalty for unserved penalty right there i don't think that's actually going to affect anything but jam sandkit can he make a podium nice, finish nice. in his first shake and bake <laughs> f1 appearance uh, we're going to take it on board sure. with him as he finishes it up right here there's a oh, yellow God. flag sector one in sector over. two didn't let everybody catch up man oh man couple of flags right there Looking this back. is the race. 
Yeah, Sorry, go ahead. Man, it's the race for the final podium position. There's just less than a second between him and Hell is here. Hell is here on more worn tires. Sam Kiff goes off the track, headed into Red Bull Mobile for the final spot on the podium. They're less than a second apart. Oh my gosh. Jam Sanchez just trying to keep it under control. Hell is here is right on his <laughs> tail. As we go to the star, it looks like. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh. oh my gosh. What the heck just even happened? <laughs> they both wrecked the line. That was awful, they both that was were good. hard on the gas. Coming out of Red Bull Corner. And they Jeez. were both sideways across the line. It looks like the Haas awesome. of Jam San Kid just beat <laughs> Hell is Here that across awesome. the line. What a finish. Oh my. And there you see dude. on the top step of the podium, BRL Williams. What a <gasps> race. Man, BRL Williams coming out on top. Dion Ford dub. The driver of the day frozen says what in the world ong what in the Shit. world is right that was a probably one of the craziest finishes i've ever seen especially in an f1 race holy smack that just goes to show what this rain can truly do to those cars oh man well you can see it right there brl williams coming up on top points. in the williams car oh, rangers right. with the fastest oh, lap yeah, he's gonna have a minute right. 673 in the mclaren hell is here in third with the mercedes so all three drivers in the top podium finish all with three different cars right there one two three mercedes and the haas at the end that was awesome jam san kith in fourth and the haas in his first <laughs> appearance so great great run right there especially with uh, his first uh, was, time being awesome. with these guys, at least Justin in fifth, <laughs> Dion Ford Dub in sixth, <laughs> Jay Mac attack in seventh, more than a cape in eighth, and okay, unfortunately, David experiencing some internet issues here tonight. He is going to be in ninth place with Red Bull Racing. Hey, did you DNF Atlanta on the last Atlanta Hell line? is here in that Mercedes who crossed the finish line in the fourth position actually ending up in the <laughs> third spot because wow. of those time penalties to jam san kit and there was the difference i believe is three seconds where uh it's three seconds oh, of penalties for hell is here six thing. seconds of penalties for jam san kit so a great fight to the end but it uh, it ends up all for naught as uh the mercedes of hell is here gets the final oh, podium spot lunch, uh, thrilling oh. thrilling finish regardless yeah, man, that was a fantastic race at the Austrian Grand Prix. I know it got the rain out and kind of got some, uh, you know, distance in between those drivers, but I feel like that was a fantastic race. They took the elements and they worked with them, and especially right there with the BRL Williams in the Williams car. Man, oh man, did he have a car today. It didn't matter if it was raining, if it was hailing, if it was sunny as crap. This man was going fast, so... Great job from all of these drivers here today for the F1 Shake and Bake Series here at the Austrian Grand Prix. Greatly appreciate Rick James. I am Rick James 36 is his Twitter and his Twitch for being in the uh, party with me here today. And Dion Ford Dub for putting all this together and uh, doing some in-race reporting. So anything else for you to say here tonight, Rick, before we head off? Thank you so much for having me. Thank you to Shake and Bake for putting this on. Thank you to everyone, uh, Frozen, Dion, all the drivers that are involved, and last but certainly never least, you, my friend, the great Atlanta Racing. Give this man a follow. Smash that subscribe button. You are listening to the very, very best in racing commentary with Atlanta Racing. You could not make a smarter move by subscribing to his channel. What a great race. Appreciate today. it. Yeah, what a great race. I can't wait to get into uh, this lobby same time next week and do some more racing. Hopefully, I'm able to get off work and we can start it right at 1 o'clock. But thanks to you guys who uh, stuck around and messaged me, making sure that we were good to go. Thank you so much, Frozen Toes and Vols Fan. Thank you so much for uh, gifting those subscriptions and uh, donating, dude. You are the bomb.com for that. And we are going to wrap this up. Thanks, guys, for watching here. And we will be back same time, same place next week for some more Shake and Bake F1 series. Hope everybody has a great rest of your afternoon. And enjoy this Saturday night. It's about to start getting real cold. So take it to advantage before it gets real, real cold. Y'all have a great day.